Aloha fellow nature junkies, my name is Jen. I'm Toby. And this is Tanner. And welcome to our first travel vlog. In this video, we'll be taking you from sunny Hawaii to Brooks Falls, Alaska. And we'll be going over how to plan and book your trip and what to pack. So let's get started. For organizational purposes, we have divided this video into four sections. First, an introduction to the park and why it attracts so many bears and people alike. Second, the best time to visit. Third, how to plan and book your trip. And fourth, what on earth to pack. Katmai National Park is a roughly 4 million acre peninsula located in remote southern Alaska. In summer, from late June to late September, roughly 2,200 grizzlies migrate to the Brooks Falls area for one reason, salmon. Over 2 million sockeye salmon make the journey from the open ocean to these freshwater rivers to spawn. Once they hit fresh water, the silvery fish turn red in preparation for breeding. Females lucky enough to make it past the hungry bears can deposit as many as 4,000 eggs upstream. Having completed this miraculous journey, the salmon float back downstream, only to perish within days. This cycle draws stopping bears from all over the peninsula, and the park becomes one of the best places in the world to see so many of these otherwise solitary animals together. While bears can be seen all around the park, Brooks Falls has become the mecca of bear and salmon interaction. This iconic waterfall sees anywhere from two to 400,000 salmon attempting to make the death-defying leap upstream. And luckily for the salmon, hungry bears await to snatch their sailing bodies out of the air. That survival act is what draws thousands of people to Brooks Falls every single year, us included. Now that we've given you a bit of background on the area, let's look at when to go. While the park is open from June through mid-September, there are really only two optimal time periods, late June through July and early September, with August being a lull period for bear activity. Late June through July is the peak period for seeing bears catching salmon at the falls. Much of this is due to the salmon themselves. The vast majority are migrating upstream to spawn, meaning the falls bustles with bears and humans. Since the maximum capacity for the viewing platform is 40 visitors per hour, a visit in June or July can see a wait list at the platform, especially during the day when day trippers arrive. If your goal is to photograph many bears catching salmon or multiple fish jumping upstream, this period is for you. If you opt to camp, stay at the lodge, or create your own multi-day trip, you can visit the platform early in the morning or in the evening to avoid the crowds. This time period also sees fewer rainy days and affords about 18 hours of daylight, aka more time to hang with the bears. Moving into August, most of the salmon have reached the higher spawning grounds, causing bears to search elsewhere for food. This makes August a slow period for bear viewing at Brooks Falls. In September, you will find many bears at the lower platform picking at the dying salmon. Still, we were pleasantly surprised how many bears were catching salmon at the falls. At the peak, we counted 12 bears, with five being the fewest number at one time. One of the major benefits in our opinion to September is the tripod stipulations. After August 15th, you're allowed to have an open tripod on the platforms. While this isn't as big of a deal for photography, it's a game changer for video. Another key factor is the crowds. While September sees fewer salmon jumping and a higher propensity for rain, it more than makes up for it with smaller crowds. Our evening photography sessions often had four people or less on the viewing platforms and no rangers to control crowds. The middle of the day did get busier due to the day trippers, but we never had to wait to visit the platform. So if you want to have a good mix of bears downriver and at the falls, with the opportunities to still get the iconic salmon jumping photo, September is best. Plus, due to the waning daylight, we were able to see the northern lights two nights in a row, which was an amazing experience. I myself have never seen the Northern Lights, so it was an awesome bonus to the trip. Now, if you're still on the fence about when to visit, take a look at the videos on explore.org. They have a great live cam set up, plus tons of other videos of bears at almost any point in the season. This could provide even more clarity for which month is best for you. 
Another small bonus to going in September is seeing tons of fat bears and being given a chance to participate in Explore.org's Fat Bear Week. I will say, the extra pounds make the bears that much cuter. And you know who else is a fan of packing on the pounds for intense daily hibernation? Tanner! He's tired from making this helpful table that summarizes the benefits of these two time periods. Feel free to pause or screenshot if it helps. Now let's dive into the next section, planning your trip. There are four main options to visit the park. One, a guided day trip from Anchorage via float plane. Two, organizing your own day trips from King Salmon. Three, staying at Brooks Lodge. Or four, camping at Brooks Falls. Before we discuss these in detail, let me preface by saying that none of these options are cheap, and the lodge or camping require an extra degree of effort and luck. But the guarantee of seeing a lot of bears up close makes any of them worth it. Now let's look at the first option, the guided day trip from Anchorage. This option provides the least amount of time at Brooks Falls for your money. There are many companies to choose from, and the prices range from $950 to $1,300 for the day. We would highly recommend researching the cancellation policies and reviews, as well as give yourself at least a two-day buffer in Anchorage, in case the tour must be moved or canceled due to bad weather. We have links to various tour companies on our blog page, which can be found in the description below. Option two is to fly to King Salmon and catch the ferry or float plane over to the park. By booking a one-night stay in King Salmon, you could make two day trips over to Brooks Falls at little more than the price of a single guided day trip. Plus, you would get more than twice the time at the park. The next two options are for the bear crazy enthusiast who are willing to either fork over big bucks to stay in the lodge or camp with little comforts. Let's talk comfort first. The lodge works on a lottery system and is normally pre-booked two years in advance. While the lodge has its pros, we walked past the cabins and didn't think the amenities were worth the ticket price of $850 per night for up to four people. The main benefit in our mind would be protection from the elements. It rains a lot at Brooks Falls, plus it's cold and the bugs are horrible. So drying your stuff and being able to hang out in a warm, bug-free environment could be worth its weight in gold. For us, camping was the budget-friendly option to not only stay longer, but also embrace what Wild Alaska has to offer. To camp, you must obtain one of the 60 daily permits authorized by the park. The permits are significantly cheaper, at $12 per person per day, and become available through the park's online permit system on January 5th at 8 a.m. Alaska Standard Time. The permits sell out in seconds. We had four of us on the computer, feverishly refreshing the permits page, and were lucky to secure the six permits we wanted for Labor Day weekend. So, no matter which way you decide to visit the park, the final step is figuring out what on earth to pack. Planning what you will bring and making sure you have good quality gear is essential for this trip due to the variable weather and the lack of options if you forgot something. If you choose to camp, it is essential to have a quality tent with a rain fly since it could very well rain every single day at the park, or if you luck out as we did, only one evening. A sleeping bag is another item that I would splurge on if you haven't already. I brought my Mountain Hardware 15 degree bag and rarely got cold. Others in our group had 40 degree bags and were constantly cold, even with all of their layers. Other essential items include a self-igniting stove so you don't need to rely on matches, headlamps with enough batteries to last, as well as camp shoes that are waterproof and easy to slide on and off. One item that we don't own and I think would come in handy is an outdoor tent rug. It was almost impossible not to track dirt or mud inside the tent due to the rain, so an outdoor mat could come in handy for this trip. Two other must-have items are mosquito nets for your face and quality hiking shoes. Mosquito nets are essential for survival at Katmai, due to the vast amounts of time spent standing at the platforms. You will also do a lot of walking, and the last thing you want is sore feet or blisters. To avoid this, make sure your shoes are waterproof and comfortable. Food also deserves special attention for this trip. Prices at the King Salmon grocery store are outrageous. The box of Cheerios was $10. The lodge dining hall isn't much better, with breakfast at $17, lunch at $24, and dinner at $40 for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So unless you want to spend a small fortune on food either in King Salmon or at the park, you should be prepared to pack all your meals, whether you're staying at the lodge, camping, or overnighting in King Salmon. 
Here is what we brought for our three night and four day camping trip. Beyond this, we bought fuel, matches, and Red Bulls at the Lodge Trading Post. In addition to caffeine and fuel, the Trading Post has a nice selection of candy and bars, as well as souvenirs such as t-shirts, hoodies, and hats. The Lodge also serves $2 coffee, making it a nice place to sit by the fire and warm up after walking the park. Now that you have your camping gear, clothes, and food lists, let's get into the most important one, camera gear. As avid photographers and videographers, we brought an assortment of higher-end camera gear with us. While you can certainly get some nice photos with a smartphone or cheaper camera, you will need a large telephoto lens to get the iconic bear action photos that Brooks Falls is famous for. For this trip, most of the photos and videos you see were taken with one of the two super telephoto lenses we brought. The Sigma is a great budget option for full-frame cameras and offers more than enough zoom for the bears. While the Canon does let in a lot more light and gives nicer blurred backgrounds, daylight is not lacking at Brooks Falls, so a lens of this caliber isn't necessary. We also brought a few other lenses for specific scenarios. Depending on what shots you're interested in, these may or may not be worth considering. In the end, we kept our telephoto lenses on almost all of the time. This is not to say that you can't get good results with a compact zoom camera or something similar. In fact, Brooks Falls is one of the best wildlife destinations imaginable for such a camera. You'll have less weight to lug around, there's sufficient daylight for a smaller camera sensor, and in many places, such as the boardwalk and falls platform, the bears can be quite close. Other than your camera, there are a few accessories that we would definitely recommend bringing. A camera strap will let you keep your heavy camera ready at a moment's notice while you're walking along trails to the lookouts. And a camera rain cover is necessary given the frequent and unpredictable rain. Also, if you want to get a shot of the bears in the falls with smooth, silky water, you'll need either a set of neutral density filters or a variable neutral density filter. Other important accessories would be batteries and charging packs. If camping, there will be no place to recharge your batteries or phones except in the lodge dining hall. For ease of charging, we ended up bringing four batteries each for our cameras, along with three battery packs, and it still wasn't enough. Since we shot predominantly video, we went through almost two to three batteries per day. So we would recommend bringing at least three camera batteries, plus battery packs to recharge them for each additional day. Another noteworthy tip is bringing a small toolkit. Due to traveling and just normal wear and tear, screws can come loose and get lost, smudges can happen, or tripods can break. We were very fortunate to not have any huge losses, but we've heard horror stories of other people's cameras or lenses breaking, which is surely a trip ruiner. Bottom line, if you can afford to pack a spare lens and camera or toolkit, do it. Lastly, while you cannot use a tripod at the Falls platform during the busiest months, we would still recommend bringing a tripod if you have the space, since it's helpful when waiting or photographing in other areas. Now that we've covered the park, when to go, how to get there, and what to pack, be sure to check out our next video on how to make the most of your time at the park and our tips and tricks on getting the best footage possible. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them in the comments below. Thank you for watching our first travel video, and we have many more adventures planned and appreciate your support. Oh, and if you're still wondering, yes, Tanner is still sleeping.